I bring you greetings in the matchless name of my Lord God and soon coming Savior, Jesus Christ. Hello, this is the Lord's own holy, happy, and quite harmless Honey Badger, Reverend Bob Lico, bringing you another news and views report. Yea, verily, I am he who attempts to unscrew the inscrutable. And today, I have as a topic for this week's update, we need to realize we are fighting a spiritual battle. If by now, God's own children do not realize that they are in the spiritual battle of their lifetime, well, I don't know what else to do. I hope they watch the broadcast and become awakened in our Lord's name. And if you find this content of value, then please like, share, and subscribe. It doesn't cost you a thing. I do not ask you for any donations or any money. I don't have any advertisements on here. I'm non-monetized. I don't want YouTube to censor what I'm saying. So please do me a favor to like the video, share it with some other people, and by all means, please, become a subscriber. Help the honey badger out. Let's stick it to YouTube and the man. Amen. All right, let's jump into the headlines today. It's a tough time for trannies, guys and gals, and everyone in between, apparently. But I am thankful, and I like to record good news as well as the troubling, concerning things for us to pray about. And we can give God thanks and praise for some pushback. And if you'd like, if you go to my channel, Honey Badger Bob, if you're on Facebook seeing this or Rumble, uh, you'll find a lot of videos. And a couple of them are entitled, I believe, Pushback. Please check them out. Here's some more good pushback. And I love Florida, Tennessee, Arkansas, Mississippi. A lot of the southern states are awakening to reality. Number one, Miami Hotel Liquor License may be revoked over a drag show. And this was recorded by the Washington Blade, a gay uh, news organ. <laughs> uh, well, they did lose their liquor license because the court did deem that what they were doing was filthy and inappropriate for children. Because they, as I've been crying out and decrying, they continue the LGBTQ sodomite death cult continues to have their free, family-oriented drag shows and little uh, vignettes in bars and invite children in, into adult establishments. And I have always said, there are laws on the books, people, called contributing to the delinquency of minors. Those laws have teeth. They simply need to be acted on by godly prosecutors that are doing their job. Well, Florida is one of these con uh, countries, it's almost its own country, one of these counties, cities, states that is pushing back. Good for you, Miami. Next article. Iowa, set to ban transgender students from using bathrooms of their choice as lawmakers send bill to the Republican governor. We know what that means. That means, yep, they are expected to sign the bill into law. Oh, Iowa, you're such a mean state. You just don't let people choose whatever bathroom they feel like using today. Ooh, hmm, I think I'm going to follow her into the ladies' room. Hmm, just to, you know, hey. They actually had to pass a bill. That's the sad thing, is that they had to pass a bill in America to prohibit this type of perversity and, and, and idiocracy. But, well, thank the Lord they did. Florida and Iowa. Hey, here we go. Mutilating children for profit. I've written and talked about this extensively. California, the woke state. Teen sues doctors over breast removal surgery at age 13 in Kaiser Permanente. Yeah, really permanent once you cut your breasts off or your penis. Uh, pretty permanent. In Kaiser's Permanente second blockbuster trans lawsuit. Good. People, children are waking up saying, hey, my parents forced me to be mutilated 
and I'm suing you, probably going to sue my parents, and you ought to. They have ruined your lives. They deceived you as a young child when you didn't know your left hand from your right, and now your life is ruined, and you're going to be miserable until the Lord returns or you die. Hopefully the Lord Jesus will redeem these kids and uh, give them a new hope and new life uh, in, in his family. Uh, there's another transsexual boy named Raven who looks like a little girl who looks uh, at least the current pictures of the old pictures when when he had been transitioned at age five by his mother and had his penis removed at age 11 oh he was the poster boy for transsexual people Read the articles. I put it up on Facebook. It's all over the place. This person, this young man's life is ruined. He has all kinds of medical problems, sexual problems, mental problems, as so many of these poor children experience. Read the article. West Virginia Republican legislator passes bill banning health care for transgender minors. Ooh, those bad Republicans. I'm not a, a member of the Republican Party, the Democrat Party, Liberty. I'm not a, a member of any political party. I'm not a member of any denomination. No, ah, ah. But I'm thankful for the Republican Party that does, on occasion, the right thing. They're just the other cheek of the ass, folks. The left and right cheeks of the same butt, if you will. Okay? Get that together. Understand that. They're the parts of the same coin. Oh, no, brother, the Republicans are the party of God. Well, they give lip service more, and they do a few things that are still morally correct. I would call them a party that is far from God still. Both parties are. They need to repent. Republicans tend to be more genuine Christians, although there are Christians in the Democrat Party. Moving on, it's not political, but it's a tough time for trannies. There is pushback. Hallelujah. Answer to prayer. Thanks be to God. There are some right-thinking people who are saying no to this nonsense. We love the men and women who have been deceived by the enemy. We pray for them. They are welcome to come to Lifeway Community Church on Sunday and hear the word of God and hopefully by God's spirit be convicted of their sins and repent and receive the Lord and be welcomed into the family. Ah, I'm going to move on. Let's go. Ex exclusive polling shows abortion, gay marriage, deeply unpopular in socialist Venezuela. What? But but socialists are woke people. They're supposed to be for gay people and abortion and all manner of, of civil liberties. Really? Don't buy the lie. I lived in Russia, communist Soviet Russia, in the embassy during the height of the Cold War for several years. Saw it with my own young eyes. My parents were spies, working for our government, working for the military. Dad was his assistant army military attache. I understand socialism and communism and capitalism. None of them are of God necessarily. God is not of this political world system. But anyway, what people seem to forget is that the socialist slash communist, remember Cuba, remember Che, oh, how handsome and charismatic his image is. Oh, he lined up and gunned down and executed homosexuals in Cuba. Oh, yeah, the same in Russia, same in China, same in North Korea. Oh, all those socialist nations uh, decry homosexuality. Do you think transgendered people are going to be free under a socialist system? Oh, you'll be in the gulag, pal, gal, whatever you are, whoever you are. Yeah, but I just found that interesting. Deeply unpopular. Some pushback. 
Why? Because before socialism, Venezuela was a Roman Catholic nation. And I know Roman Catholicism is a cult, but nonetheless, there are still genuine born-again people within that cultic system. And for a period of time, at least the Lord and his word and his church was somewhat honored in Venezuela. That has all changed, just like with the French Revolution and that great socialist experiment in France. What a great godly country it is not today. It's burning, by the way. Tennessee, library director fired over unkind pushback during Kirk Cameron event. Kirk Cameron has written a Christian book, and he is going around libraries reading, doing a Christian story time reading of his book. I'm sorry, I do not know the title of the book, but you can certainly look this article up on, I've got the um, citation right there, foxnews.com, look it up, probably watch the video. But he goes into a library in Tennessee, which is a unwoke state. He's been invited there. It's all been set up. He's sitting down to read. And then the director decides to come over and get in his face because it's a biblical book. It is a book upholding Christian morality and is not part of the woke transgender agenda. Well, thank goodness he was fired for being rude to our brother. And I don't uh, support us as Christians being rude to anyone. We are to be loving, kind, compassionate. We are to listen and then speak, but we speak the truth and we speak it in love. I do like to say here at the end of this little section that there are still some right thinking people on the globe, but we are truly a remnant. Moving on. But even as there is some godly pushback, hey, we're in a spiritual battle. That's the first thing we saw. We need to wake up. We are in spiritual warfare, serious spiritual warfare. Satan, our adversary and his forces, they're not silent. Satan is not silent over this pushback. He is the God of this world. Now, as I've already expressed on Facebook, and I'll just do it again because I like to needle the devil, uh, is that he is the God of this world, according to the Apostle Paul. Look around you, friend, brother and sister. What kind of shape is this world in? What kind of a job has the God, in quotes, little g, of this world done? Even when he approached Jesus 2,000 years ago and said, Oh, just bow down and worship me. I'll give you, shows him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, in a parsec. Boom, gives him an open vision. I own it all. Worship me. Are you kidding me? King's X there, pal. <laughs> no way. Jose, worship you. Have you seen the condition of the world, Mr. God of this world? Pestilence, war, famine, destruction, disease, depression, sadness, animosity, unrestrained anger, unrestrained lust, diseases un out of control. This you're doing. Ooh. Who in their right mind would worship you for two seconds? You loser. You failure. And I'm happy to say that you are a day closer to your eternal judgment. Ever. Never ending conscious eternal torment. Forever. O thou son of the morning. Well, here's pushback from our adversaries. Rachel Levine, the man, says Biden administration backs gender change therapy for kids. In fact, our resident president, Dr. Demento, got up recently. I didn't put the article in here, but he said that it was time, man, almost the unforgivable sin to deny children. And he used that. He attached sin and denying children mutilation. Somehow it's sinful to deny Young children, mutilation. Well, ask the guy that was mutilated at age five by his mother. Ask the people in California, the girl who's suing the doctors for removing her breasts at age 13 because she was convinced that was the thing to do. 
Yeah, Biden admin backs gender change. Well, you tell me why the honey badger thinks America is under the righteous judgment of a holy God. We have our president who has dementia. I don't mock him. Members of our own family have died from Alzheimer's. But he's got it. He's unfit to serve. Our vice president is an acknowledged, openly acknowledged, unrepentant adulteress, as far as I can find out, with Willie Brown back in California. Our spokeswoman for the nation is a out-front lesbian. Our secretary over transportation for the nation is an unrepentant sodomite married who has adopted a child, two men who have adopted a little baby. Pete Buttleg, or whatever his name is. Then we have our assistant uh, health secretary, Rachel Levine, a man who is a transsexual who masquerades or pretends to be a woman. That is in, again, and also, as, a, as we know, you can look this up, fact check me all day. In every state of the union, we have in positions of power, high uh, positions, LBGTQ plus trannies uh, type people in every state of this nation. So don't tell me, oh no, we're a city set on the hill. We're a blessed nation, brother. You're wrong. We're God's people. Read your Bibles. We are not. Number two, transgender lawmaker from Minnesota wins USA Today's Woman of the Year Award, standing alongside Michelle Obama as critics question, what will ever be left for biological females? Hmm, good question. Where are the fourth wave radical feminists in this? In fact, our resident president, Dr. Demento, was uh, recently seen giving an award to a transsexual man masquerading as a woman on Woman's Day uh, from uh, Venezuela. Came here to America with Dr. Jill standing next to resident Dr. Demento giving a man an award for being a woman. Now we have USA Today major newspaper giving the Woman of the, World, or the Year award to a man. Is the world not confused? Is not darkness being called light? Doesn't this make you not just laugh and chuckle, you should weep. You should be in great concern over what is coming our way. And it's here now. Oh, we're dead. Stick a fork in America. We just don't know it. We're in the zombie phase. We're just, uh, 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 brains, brains. If I only had a brain. <whistles> yeah, I saw the movie. Next article. Number of transgender children seeking treatment surges in the U.S., according to Reuters. Well, I've shown you the other articles showing those who have received transgender surgery are surging in lawsuits depression, suicide, unable to function sexually, or even go to the toilet many times. Sad and disgusting as that sounds. Read the articles. Ah, but they're surging. And you know what? The majority of these cases are not children seeking. It is parents going, go on, go on. You want to be a little girl. You want to be a little boy. Because I really wanted a girl and I got a boy or I got a boy and I wanted a girl. And so don't you really prefer to, pre I, I, I just knew I wanted a girl, and, and you look so pretty in pink, Johnny. Yeah, I, I blame the parents. No child ever comes to this thought in and of themselves. They really don't. They are pushed and manipulated into thinking this way. Canada, I have covered this. I am so sick of Canada. What a demonic, ungodly, wicked nation. I thought America was wicked. Man, I don't know if Canada is not right. At, well, we're all part of the same continental group here. Maybe the Lord will just dump it all, just flush, flush both of us. Well, they're so tied to the hip to America. Whatever happens to us is going to happen to them. Canada's rapid embrace of euthanasia exposed. Top medical organization wants to give lethal injections to seriously ill 
newborns. As government funds morbid activity book for children to understand assisted dying. This Daily Mail article, read it. Canada has gone from youth and offering youth in Asia, euthanasia to people with critical, un, you know, uh, no way out illnesses. You're going to die. Nothing we can do for you. Game over. It start always starts with those few cases of people who are in unremitting pain or are most certainly going to die from rabies or bad cancer, whatever. And so they say, you know, it's up to you. You can either suffer the next six months, you make the decision, you can check out today. So up to you. So they begin that way. They start that way with a compassionate. I mean, that's the compassionate thing to do, honey badger. What, do you want to sit around for six months and rot away? Oh, no, I really don't. But I don't believe that it's my purview. I didn't bring myself into this world. And I certainly do not have the authority to take myself out of it. I am a steward of this body. <laughs> Guilty. Lord, forgive me. Trying to do better. Give me grace. I'm a steward of this body. But it's not my body. I'm not my own. I belong to Jesus. I don't have anything. I don't have any money. I don't own this home. I don't own this computer. I own nothing. It's all his. It really is. That's what it means to be a Christian. I'm a steward. I'm a steward of the manifold grace of God. Everything he gives me is just a gift. Well, here we have Canada now. They've gone from people with horrible, un untreatable illnesses. Then they went down, and you read the articles, follow the progression. Then they went to people that were mentally retarded. And one doctor is quoted as celebrating. I covered this. Oh, they, they, they killed someone who was not even mentally able to make the decision one way or the other. They just went in and killed him. Ha, ha, ha. Strike a victory for euthanasia. So they went from that, then now to people with bad handicaps, and now to seriously ill newborns. Whatever happened to treating seriously ill newborns? Whatever happened to going to the wall, going to the mat, doing everything you could because life is precious? Well, this kid's got a little problem, doesn't look, they may not have a, a quality life. Their leg doesn't work, so they'll always need crutches. Well, just kill them. Yeah. Useless eater. They're going to end up costing us money. We're going to have to pay for the, uh, their family's got to pay for these medical bills. You know, the next 18, 20 years of their life, they're going to be able to run and play with other children. Ah, so just kill them. Well, apparently, wants to give lethal injections to seriously ill newborns. God have mercy. God have mercy on the people of Canada. Well, as I've also been covering for now every broadcast for over two years, turn on, tune in, drop out. If you go to YouTube or you go on Google, put that phrase in, you will come up with a very, it's pretty spooky actually, uh, audio clip, video clip of Timothy Leary, Dr. Timothy Leary, whom I used to, to be enthralled with him and his uh, partner, Dr. Richard Alpert, who became uh, Ram Das, Baba Ram Das, who wrote uh, Be Not Content in the 70s. But he made that statement. That was the great message of Tim Leary in the mid-60s. Turn on, tune in, drop out. The society sucked. We were involved in an unethical war called Vietnam, which we were gaslighted into as a nation. We had no business in that war. It was a whole setup. We did not win the war. We accomplished nothing except the loss of hundreds of thousands of lives and uh, millions and millions of dollars and bad animosity and a reputation for the United States that we still haven't recovered from. So during that time, LSD was released by the CIA onto the populations through uh, various rock groups, including the Grateful Dead, Doors, other people, were all part of the CIA work. Sorry, guys, the whole 60s was a psyop and we fell for it. I fell for it hook, line, and sleeker. Okay, so did many of you. It was a psyop. We got played. Okay, I've been fooled by lots of people. Let's read the article. Psychedelics might help people change. 
unwanted behaviors by helping them reinvent their perceptions of themselves. Well, that's very possible. You certainly are going to reinvent your perception of reality by taking psychedelics because you will come to understand that the things that you see ain't necessarily so. I know, been there, done lots of LSD in the 70s. <laughs> lots and, and lots. Uh, guys, psychedelics are, are not the answer. Let's keep moving on. Psychedelic brew, ayahuasca. Profound impact revealed in brain scans. Oh, yeah, I believe that. The brew is so potent that practitioners report not only powerful hallucinations, oh, yeah, but near-death experiences, contact, here you go, that's why it's in bold, near-death experiences, contact with higher dimensional beings, and life-transforming voyages through alternative realities. Now, doesn't that sound interesting? It did to me in the 70s, hearing these reports, listening to other people talk, reading the, the accounts and the underground newspapers, magazines that were, were being handed out. Yeah, profound. What they didn't say is that over half the people have hellish, damnable experiences that stay with them the rest of their lives. Yeah, we didn't mention that. We kind of left that part out. But I like that contact with higher dimensional beings. Oh, yeah, they're called demons. They're called principalities and powers. They're called the unseen realm. And believe me, those on the side of the opposition absolutely loathe humanity. They hate our guts. And they mean nothing good for you. Oh, yeah, you contact them. It'll be a life transforming voyage you'll come out believing in reincarnation you'll come out believing in false gods you'll come out thinking you are a god you'll come out thinking you're called then to go and, and bring this message of ayahuasca to your neighbors and community and change the world because you had a great experience yeah you'll meet higher dimensional beings and they'll drag you down to where they're headed which is hell Last article, psychedelic drug makers such as Transcend, look at the names, Transcend Therapeutics, Gilgamesh Pharmaceuticals. Why would you pick the name of a Nephilim giant being? A demon, part demon, part human. Gilgamesh Pharmaceuticals and Lusaris Therapeutics are raising tens of millions of dollars to develop and launch treatments for depression and PTSD. Backers believe could help reduce mental health costs. Now these are pharma pharmaceutical companies, but they make psychedelic drugs specifically. And they're doing this to treat depression and PTSD because this will help people in the long run. And I'm not going to deny that psychedelic drugs uh, on, on a very low dose, very simple level, may have some therapeutic abilities. But I strongly advise you never to use them because of what the Bible says about sorcery and very simply because I'm a simple guy. I believe the scriptures, folks. I believe in my Lord Jesus Christ. He is my God, my King, my Lord, my best friend, my healer, my financier, the giver of all insight, knowledge, and wisdom that I need. He's my everything. I don't need psychedelics to deal with depression. I need the Lord Jesus Christ. I do not need psychedelics to deal with addiction. I need to be set free by the power of the name of Jesus. And these things are readily available to anyone who will avail themselves of them. Moving on. A bad trip with, a, with the toad shaman. Now, in Texas... They have apparently springing up here and there a lot of psychedelic churches. These are all about psychedelic churches here. And so in Texas, they have the cane toad. Uh, and I guess it's also in Colorado, the Sonoran Desert toad. And when you grab these big toads and you scare them or you squeeze them a little bit, 
on the top of their head and on their skin begins to ooze out a toxin, a poison. Well, what you do is you collect that off of Mr. or Mrs. Toad. You can let it dry in the sun, and then you can smoke that or eat it, put it in a tea, use it as a in an enema. I, I guess you probably could inject it intravenously if it breaks down. I don't know if it breaks down alcohol or water. Maybe you can't uh, in, inject it. I know you can with pharmaceutical DMT. Um, I don't know about the natural stuff from the buffo toad. Well, anyway, you got a toad shaman and he's out and people are having bad experiences because it's the same basic chemi chemical that's in ayahuasca. DMT, dimethyltryptamine. And it's a very fast acting, instantaneous, very short acting, but very profound. I happen to believe that the CIA has people on DMT drips uh, to keep them in that place of an unseen realm to get insight, wisdom, knowledge, and alleged understanding from uh, the fallen powers. Oh yeah, our government and all governments are in collusion with manifest demonic powers. Take that for what it's worth. Next article, the Pied Piper of Psychedelic Toads, Octavio Rettig, an underground practitioner of 5-MeO-DMT, a hallucinogenic substance derived from the Sonoran Desert Toads, claimed that he revived a lost Mesoamerican ritual. You read about that in the New Yorker magazine. Oh, yeah. This guy starts up and he goes, oh, this is what the Aztecs and the Incas and the, the native peoples have always done. They've always used this desert toad uh, for spiritual enlightenment. Now, admittedly, we have no written proof of this. We have no rock paintings, petroglyphs, uh, or any real Native American people coming forward and saying, oh, yeah, man, my grandfather talked to, talked to us about toad licking uh, to way back in the day. We don't do it anymore. There is the Native American Church, which was legal, one of the first and only groups that actually got federally recognized for using the peyote button as their sacrament, which I do not support. Hallucinogens are not sacramental drugs that get you in touch with Almighty God. They are forbidden by him. Those who use them will be rejected by him uh, and judged most severely. Okay. So this guy claims he's reviving a lost Mesoamerican. Well, how does he know that? Well, real simple. He tripped balls and while in an altered state of consciousness had a being tell him, oh yes, my son, I am sending you back to teach people to use the sacred toad. Ever notice in Revelation how what comes out of the mouth of the false prophet, beast? Three frog spirits. Go and look up, just have some fun. Go and look up Google images, DMT images, and note how many of these DMT experiencers draw psychedelic toads and experience toad beings speaking to them. Just a coincidence? I don't think so. Next article, ex-morons are running a magic mushroom church. Well, they kind of jumped out of the pan into the fire. It would have been better for them on the day of judgment to have been faithful Mormons than to get involved in sorcery and drug use trying to connect with the eternal God. You may question that and wonder, perhaps you've never considered this. Hell is a horrible place and no one wants to go there. And I encourage you to trust in the Lord today for the forgiveness of your sins, that you don't die in your sins and go to hell. But everyone is not judged the same. The person who just is a, a quotes, good moral person but never believed on the Lord will not receive the same judgment from the hand of a righteous and fair, honest God that Hitler receives. Not everybody just goes, gets swept into the abyss, just eh, willy-nilly. No, the books will be opened. And people's lives, there's, oh, I'm going to go, I'm not that bad. Your best work will not merit eternal life. Please understand that. Only the work of Christ we trust in, his completed and finished work. Then the things we do as his follower, the Lord rewards. Hallelujah. But anyway, 
the Mormons made a mistake by, they did the right thing by leaving Mormonism. It's a cult. It's ungodly. It will take you to hell. Joseph Smith is a false prophet and a false teacher. But they went from one to, they were led out of one and the enemy comes in and they open a magic mark. They found God through taking psychedelics. Oh, they found a God, not the God. Next one. The sacred mushroom church. The mission of, look at that, sanctuary with a P, isn't that cute and clever, is to shepherd a non-denominational, I'm, I'm down with that, international, well, I'm for global outreach of the mission, faith-based community, yes, we should walk in faith, uh-oh, that centers around the instrumental sacramental sacrament of, of sacred mushrooms for personal, communal, and global healing. Well... Gee, you had me real good there until you got to the centers. Or it could have been a faith-based faith community excuse me, that centers around the mission of Jesus and making his name known and glorified throughout the earth, period. Nope. They're doing all of this stuff. They've got that pious aura around them. And unfortunately, this is why I'm concerned. This will draw in young, weak seekers in the church you got a lot of people in church that that are not yet converted but they're seeking they're curious maybe they've been raised in the christian family but they they want that connection that's what i wanted in the 70s i knew god was exist i knew he was real i knew he, he was powerful and i wanted him in my life i wanted to know him to experience him in a manifest way and they were telling me oh take lsd then that's the way to go. And oh boy, did I do it. Well, that was 1970. Now we're in 2023 and that clock has come around again. And that same lie is now being pushed. But this time they're really attaching uh, the church to this, which they did not do in the, in the 70s. Next one. Welcome to the Divine Assembly, the Mushroom Church. Protected by the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. Our mushroom sacrament helps us to connect with the divine. Worship on your own or as an active part of a healthy interconnected community. So you've got the sanctuary. You've got toad shamans in Texas. You've got ex-Mormons, the Magic Mushroom Church. Now we have the Divine Assembly. And if you go online, you'll find that there are probably another half a dozen names of different groups out there. Pastors, Bible teachers, I hope that you are following this and you are educating your congregations. I have several YouTube videos on Honey Badger Bob dealing with psychedelic drugs. Maybe consider watching them. Well, as I have also covered on many broadcasts, the four divine strikes from God that strike of pestilence, famine, drought, war, the sword, and war, uh, yes, sword, yes, there we go. Well, let's look at some of these, and they're ongoing. I've got separate presentations on each one of these. H5N1 bird flu, if you go to cdc.gov and look under H5N1 bird flu, you will see their current global summary. It's not good, folks. I'm not going to go into it here. I'm way over time. Read it and be concerned. Vaccine makers are preparing for bird flu. Although most experts say bird flu is not an immediate threat to humans. That's a lie. Efforts are underway to produce vaccines for H5N1 or other potential pandemic viruses. Scientific American. Oh, it is a threat to humans. Humans have died in many continents already. Several continents, many countries. Oh, not by the hundreds. But it never starts that way, does it? It's always just a few, and maybe it can get snuffed out. I hope you're paying attention to Marburg in Africa, in Zambia, Tanzania, spreading 90, 80, 90% kill rate with Marburg. But yeah, they're preparing an H5N1 vaccine that they want to give all of the chickens and poultry, all birds, basically. And they want to give them also kind of a COVID shot. So if you've avoided taking the COVID shot and you eat chicken or maybe beef or pork, we'll see where it goes. 
you're still going to end up with the nasties in your system. Boy, the world is a pl prison planet, to be sure. But yeah, they want H5N1 for humans as well, because they believe it has already jumped to mammals and humans. Not a lot in the news about it. Check out the CDC report about bird flu and its spread. Watch my reports on it. I covered this from the very beginning. Next article, prevention and antiviral treatment for bird flu viruses in people. Oh, Scientific American is going with the old data saying, oh, it's not an immediate threat to humans. Old data, not true. Treatment of bird flu viruses in people. Read the CDC.gov. I know it put a lot of faith in the CDC when it, they lied to us about COVID. I don't believe they're lying to us about this. Make up your own mind. So that is the pestilence. Of course, we have Zika. We have all the tick-borne illnesses. We have malaria. We have Marburg. We've got COVID still. It's ubiquitous. It's not going away. All of these things. As for famine and drought, well, an expected 345.2 million people projected to be food insecure in 2023. More than double the number of 2020. So just in three years, we have doubled. This constitutes a staggering rise of 200 million people compared to pre-COVID pandemic levels. More than 900,000 people worldwide are fighting to survive in famine-like conditions. The World Food Project. I believe a UN-based project. Famine is raging all over the world. Drought is raging in America. Even with all the water and stuff, America is still in drought. The Midwest has not been that impacted by it. California may have a bit of a reprieve, but we're seeing their storms and their floods. And no, ah, uh, Kenya, Ethiopia, places all throughout Africa, people are starving. And money from the West is drying up. I tell them they've got to become self-sufficient. They've got to seek the face of God and learn what they must do to receive help locally because it's going to stop from America. Our dollar is about dead. We'll talk about that in a minute. So this is ongoing all over the world. Drought, famine, the war. Just look up on Google concerning global famine in 2023 if you don't think it's an issue. And there are over 16 million hits. Probably more than that today. Millions of people are going to starve and die in 2023 and succeeding years. I've covered the fact that every major river system in America and in the world is drying up. Here's an article. The reason and meaning behind the Euphrates river drying up bible talks about the euphrates drying up and it is and it has the colorado river drought crisis how did this happen can it be fixed europe's four major rivers are drying up at the worst possible time covered this the po the danube the yangtze in china the yellow river the mekong the mississippi the amazon they're all drying up, folks, and that is how the majority of food and goods travel in the world. Judgment is upon us. Now, on the next slide, here we go. Here is a, the new report shows alarming changes in entire global water cycle. Read the book of the Revelation, what it talks about concerning the pollution and loss of drinking water. Over two thirds of the population of the earth is going to die. Two thirds, two out of three people you see in a crowd will die due to the judgments of God, the great tribulation, the activity of Satan, their own carnality. But one of the ways they're going to die is through the loss of water. Look at the earth people 
Look at what's going on and pay attention. And if you're not a believer, become one. Last but not least, the reset. I'm not, the Honey Badger is not a financial guru. I have very little financial understanding, knowledge, or wisdom. My Lord does. That's why he handles my money. I can't balance a checkbook effectively. But I can learn, and I do pay attention, and I do listen to people, and I surround myself with people who do understand these things and can give me good advice. You see, we don't have to know everything. We're a body. Every joint supplies. I've got people in my family I can draw on for legal advice, financial advice, veterinary advice, medical advice, marriage advice. Oh, we have a tremendous resource in the body of Christ. And so I do understand this much, and I've read the book of the Revelation and listened to the Bible, the complete Bible, 12 times a year from Genesis to Revelation, once a month, every month. My wife and I are on that track this year. We're on our third cycle already this year, third month. And so I know that a reset is coming, that a one world government is coming, and that people will not be able to buy or sell without the mark, whatever that may be, of the beast. And everything is pointing to some form of a digital type currency, which may be in chipped in a person's body, in their DNA. I don't know how they're going to do it. But here's some things just for us as Americans. I, you and other countries, maybe things are totally different. I only know my country and I know where we're at. And I think I know what the Lord's doing in our midst. The US dollar is currently the world's reserve currency. Almost all other currencies are pegged on the accepted, I was trying to bring my wallet up, I was gonna show you a dollar. Uh, almost all other currencies are pegged on the accepted value of the United States dollar. So when I tell you in Uganda, oh, the dollar is going to fail and probably fail very soon and probably very quickly. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, God will provide. He'll raise up some other people to support us. Oh, I hope he does. I pray he does. I pray every day. Uh, but the thing is this, your shilling is pegged to the dollar and the euro. So when they go bye-bye and all of a sudden they go, you know, we're not using dollars anymore. We don't like it. They're worthless. They're not backed by anything. So we're just going to switch something else. And you may be a millionaire. I may have a million U.S. dollars in the bank. I don't. And if I did, I'd get them out of the bank. And convert them into gold and silver uh, and I can wake up tomorrow and yeah there's a million dollars US dollars in there but the US dollar is worth one penny so I actually have like what ten thousand dollars or a hundred thousand whatever it is that could happen it's happened in Venezuela it's happened in other countries recently Sri Lanka anyone remember what's going on there anybody remember what happened in Nigeria when they tried to just call in, cancel their Naira, the great upheaval that occurred. It's very possible for, for me to wake up tomorrow, today's Thursday, could wake up Friday, and they say, dollar's over. Why? Number point two, the U.S. dollar is not backed by anything tangible. It is, in effect, monopoly money, guys, just with different denominations, bigger numbers on them, different dead presidents. But the money itself, it's not backed by gold, silver, platinum, palladium, oil, Zippo, nada, nothing, zilch. It's only backed by the good faith people have in it. And guess what? They're losing faith massively and rapidly. Why? Because it doesn't, it's not worth anything. It's not. None of the fiat currencies are worth anything. The euro. Go to any country. 
whatever they're the the ruble currently the yuan the yen they have nothing backing them it's all smoke and mirrors and we all pretend well some people are kind of waking up like the honey badger and being the guy to go the emperor has no clothes on that's been my ministry for over 40 years i'm the guy in the congregation that goes eh, excuse me pastor wait a minute doesn't the bible say and i'll rain on your parades if you're not biblical if it's not right god will show me and i just will say stuff and people oh crap i thought we were gonna be like, yeah no, no, he's right yeah, well i try something else guys the the nations of the world and our enemies are well aware of this dollars not worth the paper they're printed on this is why recently we have taken what little money we have out of our savings which was only giving us next to nothing in interest we have some other investments and we took them out here hang on a second and so come back again with foray what you do is you take your paper funny money this is I'm not a financial advisor so I'm not giving you financial advice then you go and you buy at least what I can afford is silver silver and gold have never been worth nothing they are always of value and here's the thing I know people talk about silver and they go oh silver not that great an investment it hasn't gone up that much I mean it's gone up a little bit it just kind of rocks around 20 25 bucks 28 bucks an ounce yeah well they use a lot of silver guys in making these missiles and bombs today and there's not a lot of silver being currently mined it's kind of a it's going down so it's still the poor man's hedge and it's a lot better than those dollar bills that you may be putting in chase or standard federal or whatever and getting three percent or whatever per annum uh, I would take that money out because the dollar is worthless it's over for the American dollar it's just a question of when and I don't know if we're gonna make it through the summer we might the world loves its own it's trying to shore up this system believe me the globalists who are heavily invested in the dollar do not want to see it go away <laughs> that's their baby they're not uh, working with the ruble and the yuan, which are going to go to gold-backed currencies and when they do it's over for the dollar I would invest in gold-backed Russian rubles instead of dollars are you kidding me our, our money's worthless okay so our money is actually worthless and the global world system is now shifting away from the US dollar read the headlines Saudi Arabia where Nixon went and we tied our dollar from silver he took us off the last of the silver standard about 1972 we went to the petrodollar well guess what now oil is no longer just being traded in dollars Saudis decided to take yuan rubles whatever you don't have to use dollars anymore and this is happening with several countries no longer demanding dollars you should be very alarmed as a person who has dollars okay they're shifting away from the US dollar and they're going into these digital payments and I think all of this must happen in order for the new world order and its leader who will be the actual physical embodied person we call the Antichrist he'll finally uh, show up I think he's alive we'll just know who he is could be an alien being to fulfill the revelation prophecies and I say prep today while you can which means take your money out of savings and go buy some silver if you got a lot of money in savings really take it out and maybe you can afford to buy some pieces of gold you want to have at least two months worth 
of assets on hand, cash or barter, to see you through. And that's a minimum, two months. Uh, and I know that's a lot, but begin today, guys. Prep today while you still can. Amen. The reset is coming. And America is going to get spanked massively. I don't even know if we'll still be in a, a nation uh, by that time. I am fully expecting our enemies to attack us, whether it's China and Russia, China and North Korea, China and Iran, Iran and North Korea with the backing of China and Russia saying, hey, you go ahead and do it. If you happen to get in a jam, we'll, we'll back your play. The, the spy balloon that transversed our whole nation that we caught, we don't know how many have been up there, from China. Our money is worthless, and people are turning their back on the dollar rapidly as I speak. Yeah, the reset is coming, folks. And, and I don't know if America is going to be standing as a nation. We may be a shell of a nation. We may just be a nuclear wasteland, a Mad Max times here. I'm not, I'm not concerned about the Chinese. I've heard guys on YouTube talk about the Chinese coming to invade America and come over and take over California at first. And then, you know, if we get nuked, nobody's going to want this real estate. Just saying. All right, guys. A lot of things are happening this week. It's Thursday. There's some good pushback, but the enemy is active. Let us continue to pray, to stand fast, and having done all, stand, continue to trust the Lord, regardless of what's happening to us, around us, we give thanks in and for all circumstances, because we've read the end of the book, and our team is one, and our Lord is indeed King of Kings, and soon coming, Lord God and Savior. Amen.